Well, we are back. Welcome back to the next season of Feedback. It's continuing. Tonight on our first episode of the new year, we're going to be sitting with Dr. Art Barlow, who was in Cuba over the winter holiday. He's going to be talking about his trip to Cuba, and I'm sure you've heard this name in the news, Alien Gonzalez. We'll be talking about that. Also, I'll be ranting as usual in the first segment, this time about television. It's all tonight on Feedback. And as I said, welcome back to this uh, next season of Feedback. Um, it continues, so they didn't can us from last season. Um, as I said, tonight we're going to be talking with Dr. Art Barlow about his recent trip to Cuba and about Alien Gonzalez. I'm sure you've heard that name. Um, a lot of things have happened over the past few months. haven't had a chance to talk to you about it uh, just this past weekend. In fact, we've had Hillary Clinton officially announcing her run for the Senate, the presidential election. Uh, well, I'm sure we'll get back into talking to that within the next few weeks. but. The first thing I wanted, to, I wanted to talk to you about, I pulled this out of the paper, um, it must have been a week or two ago. Um, it was just a tiny little blurb in the TV section. Um, it's about a TV station in Rochester, New York, WUHF-TV. And what they're going to start doing is displaying small text ads across the bottom of the screen uh, during some of their programs. So not only are you going to have every once in a while the two-minute breaks like you see everywhere of commercials, but it's actually going to be during the program you're watching. Now this has sort of been going on for years because any sitcom you watch, there, there are certain products there. Uh, you may see they'll drink a certain brand of cola or have a certain kind of cereal. I think that's a little bit different because it's not actually in your face. This is actually going to be running right across the screen, like right here on the screen, and it's going to be ads for certain companies in the Rochester area. Um, and the quote from uh, the station manager out there was, people may hate it, but you've got to try it. No one else is trying it. That's true, and I think there's a reason no one else is trying it, because this commercialism has sort of just melded into everything that we do anymore that we can't escape it. I, you know, and I think it's, we, we've seen such a rise of business, the good economy, maybe that has something to do with it, but it's going to be at the bottom of the screen now, so I can't watch my, the, the news at night without seeing it. So there's going to be no room on the screen anymore because right now what you have, you have the weather running on the screen, you got the sports scores running on the screen, you got the traffic information, you got the school closings, you got the little thing in the corner that, that's called the bug where it's, you know, it says whatever the, the name of the show is or whatever the station you're watching is. Sometimes you even have something, when you're watching a newscast, there'll be something like right here, it's called an over the shoulder graphic about the story. So basically you have less than a quarter of the screen for actual, like the person you're watching. And now you're going to add advertising to it. I've seen this a little bit um, in some weather segments. When they put up the five-day planner, they've been starting to put advertising on it. So it's creeping more and more into television. You know, obviously, it's invaded the newspapers. There's ads everywhere, but that's easy to skip over. We can just skip that. Television now, you know, you used to be able to flip through the channels. If you didn't want to watch it, not anymore. It's going to be everywhere, and it's, uh, that's... that's I don't even know what to say about that. It's, it's bothering me. It scares me. Um, in fact, the station that's doing this, the owner of the station owns two Pittsburgh stations. So you may be seeing this coming in Pittsburgh sometime soon. I certainly hope not. So look out for that. I will be flipping the channel if I see it any time. But that's that. I had to get that off my chest. Throw that piece of paper away now. Uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, as I said earlier, we're going to be speaking with Dr. Art Barlow about what's going on in Cuba. Back after this. Programs like mentoring, job training, counseling, along with after-school activities are keeping kids away from crime, and crime away from kids. Look around. You'll see that kids involved in these kinds of programs are kids who are staying out of trouble. It takes you and programs that work. 
Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT and we'll send you a free booklet. Call now and help take a bite out of crime. Do you know who I am? Am I a P or a D? A Q, perhaps? Or a B? <laughs> I am dyslexia. And millions of kids struggle with me every time they read. Call now to help your child manage his learning disability. There's no reason to be held back. Feedback starts now. And I said, you know, it wouldn't a better name for a movie to come out now, and I think I'm going to make the movie or write the book. It would be a great book to have. And you can uh, call uh, to get her book. Um, you can also find it online. Well, and I have a feeling I'm going to be rather opinionated. People I know, so let's ask them about scheduling. Um, why, is it, why is it that students have such a problem here? With Tune into Feedback with Mark Despotakis every Tuesday and Wednesday night, beginning at 7.30 p.m. Because we're totally out of time, no time to talk to you. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, and we are back with Dr. Arthur Barlow. And uh, Dr. Barlow, thanks for joining us tonight. Glad to be here. Um, for, you, so you were in Cuba over the uh, winter holiday. We were all at home. Uh, some were skiing or whatever, and you were in Cuba. Why were you down there? How far back should we go? <laughs> Last spring, starting in March, uh, the National Newspaper Association, um, which represents a small middle market newspapers in the United States, they have about 4,000 members about 140 million readers potentially out there and um, they have their spring GAC government affairs conference in Washington DC and um, Bill Lawball and I have been going to that on and off for about three years now uh, to represent uh, the Society for Collegiate Journalists. I'm the executive director and Bill's the national president and so we have a dialogue with them, uh, networking if you will and uh, at the GAC, at the very last uh, event, it was a briefing in the National Press Club. Pierre Salinger was there. And uh, Lockwood Phillips, the president of NNA at that time, said, by the way, we're exploring the possibility of getting a, a group together uh, to go to Cuba. And if anyone's interested, uh, just throw your hat in the ring, if you will. So I kind of left scorch marks getting to the door. And um, in June, I got a correspondence, and they just wanted, you know, a packet of material, a resume, and a letter of intent, and a copy of the passport, and enough to make about half an inch of paper. And so I shipped that off before I left for the summer, and never heard anything, and I figured that was the end of it. And then one day in late October, I got a phone call from um, Alan Beerman, Nebraska. He said, we're on, we're going. And... Uh, and so we went. So I understand that it, it was more for you than, uh, than obviously just going on this trip. Um, while you were in, uh, in the University of Florida, I believe your, your uh, what was it, your master's thesis was titled Press, Self-Censorship, and the Bay of Pigs Invasion. So this had a little bit more significance for you going than just with the NNA, right? Oh, yeah. I was, uh, you know, I mean, it was kind of a layered experience, if you will. The, um, you know, the interest... You know, it was certainly there from the earlier work. And, you know, I mean, it paid off in, in many different ways. Um, but even if I hadn't had that previous research involvement, I probably would have been excited about the possibility. It's the old business, you know, as an American, we can't get there. So what's mm -hmm. it like? Um, and, well, what was it like? <laughs> what were your impressions? Well, it was a very, um, you know, I'm not going to say it was a life-changing experience because I wasn't that surprised, but um, it certainly has politicized me. And, uh, you know, it, it, I've come back saying, after 40 years of this Cuba policy, I want to know why we had it mm -hmm. and why we keep it and what we desire. And seeing as how this is an election year, these might be good questions. Sure. Because it's not working. Uh, except to the detriment of Americans. You know, we can't travel there and we can't trade there. So when you get there, you know, they're Canadians, there's 
you know, people from Latin America, the Mediterranean's well represented. There's always a scattered Aussie, but um, for Americans to legally get in and get out, you know, our country bans it. And why? Well, the, at least the, the stereotype that we're presented with is that this is a this is a bad country that you, we don't want anything to do with them. You don't want to go there. It's like a slum there. Was it that way? Did you find it to be that? No, I've been in third world countries, and uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not, I suppose, shocked or surprised by externals. Yeah, Havana looks pretty uh, grimy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the embargo has obviously worked. If one of the goals is to, is to keep their cities looking shabby and to keep their transportation system in arrears and to keep people working, you know, with antiquated equipment, fine. But, you know, school's out and the children are playing in the yard and they're playing their games and they're happy and the you know, the people in the streets seem to be going about their work the way other people do. Uh, you hear laughter, people smile, um, and so as far as an infrastructure is concerned, it's working just fine. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have, you know, we have seen to it that certain tools are, are not available, such as farm machinery. So it's not unusual to go past a sugar cane field and see somebody riding a horse, mm -hmm. or to see people plowing with oxen. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, as a group of Americans down there, did you find that, that you, were, you were the hated bunch there? Much as we're told you know, they may be? Uh, I, I will say this unequivocally. Uh, there was not one moment where I felt any anti-Americanism from any citizen of Cuba. Hmm. And I was talking to Alan Bierman a couple of days ago in Nebraska, because there's a great deal of follow-up coming down after this trip. Uh, I'm not the only person who came back asking questions and, you know, with a certain amount of outrage, if you will, um, befuddlement. Um, you know, you mentioned these stereotypes. With, you know, from whence have they come? Um, and it's time, you know, to put some of this aside. But as far as anti-Americanism, when you see the protests in the street, they're not, you know, they're, they're not expressing hatred for America. They are, you know, voting with their, their feet, if you will, for the return of one of their own. That's, that's mm -hmm. why you have 100,000 people. You know, they're not burning American flags, they're not chanting. And it, it never occurred to me, you know, and I go out on my own quite a bit. I took, uh, you know, I went to the old city of Vienna, or Vienna or Viejo, Havana, the old town, and walked back along the, the waterfront, the, the Malecon, as they call it. And, uh, you know, chatted with people and popped in stores and walked along and watched the kids down the waterfront. But it, it is not a hostile climate. However, um, there was one person on the delegation who related a story. It was like the night before they left, one of his best friends called him up and pleaded with him not to go because he felt his life was in danger. Wow. You know, you know um, don't go there because uh, everything's happening. And uh, so you go and you see, and then you have to compare the stereotype to the reality of your experience. Right. Well, um, I want to get into Alien Gonzalez a little bit, but well, first we're going to have to take a break. That's, that's certainly been something, obviously, that has this country in a rage in. And uh, from what I understand, in Cuba, at least the press is reporting it that way. We're going to take a break and come back and talk about that after this. Stop in at Fashion Bug, located in a Clarion Mall. Whether you're looking for junior trendy, girls, or fashion for women, they have it all with many different styles. With our newly expanded shoe and accessory department, you're surely to find that special touch to enhance that new outfit. And if you have a fashion question, our experts are here to help. That's Fashion Bug, located in the Clarion Mall, just off exit 9 of Interstate 80. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. till 9 p.m. Sunday from noon till 5. It's not just about planning. It's about living. And long-term relationships that outweigh short-term gains. At Edward Jimmy Investing, it's about knowing you. My every hope, my life, my world, it all begins with a dream. Edward Jones, investing in you and your dreams. In Clarion, see Gary Martin, located on Main Street, phone 226-7896. It's 
teacher has a rubber arm. If education is important to you, talk to your child's school about raising academic standards. Call 1-800-38-BE-SMART for a free booklet and be a big league parent. And we are back, and if you've been paying attention to the news, and even if you haven't, I'm sure you've heard it's the biggest news out there. Well, not the biggest news, but certainly something that's been going on since uh, Thanksgiving Day here in the United States. Aileen Gonzalez uh, um, found clinging to an inner tube. Boat, skinning, um, boat sinking killed his mother and ten others. That's how the USA Today reported it uh, a few weeks ago. The, I think this, this goes back to almost everything you've said. The whole fight is, is the American sentiment versus what, what you're saying is reality here. What is your take on it? Um, first of all, it's, it's pathetic. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely word pathetic. For it? um, if the tables were turned, I would suspect that the Marines would be in Havana by now. That's right. But, uh, you know, the question ostensibly is, who is better capable of raising a child who's just lost a parent, the father or a great uncle? Right. Well, I'd like to find any other situation where the answer would be, well, of course, the great uncle. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just a natural response to return the child to the parent. However, we had to go through the law, and the law coming from INS said, return this little boy to his father. The father's grieving as well as, as the right. son. So, uh, I think it's just a violation of family values. <laughs> That's true. You have all the uh, politicians talking about family values. Oh, I, 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 that rank hypocrisy is, is really, you know, even more insufferable at this time. Then, you know, you have a situation where you've got a group of people in Miami who really aren't Americans or Cuban Americans. They're the Cuban exile community. Um, most of them, you know, fled Cuba when Castro was successful, and Batista was certainly a dictator. And from all reports that I've heard, when they left, they had enough time to take a good deal of the money with them. So they looted the country. And uh, they've been living in exile ever since, and they've been hoping to get back to the mainland. And uh, this, this community uh, has embraced alien, but the, the battle is, where is it better to live, in Cuba or the United States? And, and that has clouded the issue. Right. And, and people then get very emotional. This little boy uh, risked his life, you know, to, to come to Disney World, and he should be able to have, you know, all the toys and dogs that he wants. That's, well, I think that, that they're saying that they've asked him, and he says, oh, yeah, I, I want to stay here. Well, he's six years old, and they've taken him to Disney World, and they give him anything he wants. What's a six-year-old boy going to say? What? And, and now you have these politicians trying to make him a citizen and keep him in the country. Well, we even have, you know, the absurdity now of, of uh, trying to rush a bill through Congress to make him a citizen. Mm -hmm. This is such an insult to the tens of thousands of people going through the legal system of INS, waiting for their green card so or their passport, point. or waiting for an opportunity to actually raise their hand and take, you know, vow allegiance and become a citizen. No, they can wait another three or four years and we'll do this. A and B, what about other children who have come on these shores? Just a little while ago, I believe there were two El Salvadorians who were immediately, you know, uh, deported. Uh, the door is shut. Uh, we have this, you know, this heartthrob where we let this, this one token child in. Um, and then there's the other dimension of the case, and, and that is that this really does, you know, it, it hurts the Cuban people. Uh, it's an island nation. I know everybody has, you know, familial bonds, but uh, my feeling was that, you know, Elian's part of this family. And, um, and so, you know, it, it's holding him in Miami is a way of reminding every Cuban of the power over, over their life, their lifestyle. So, well, I think it's arrogant. Well, what did you, what did you find when you were in Cuba? You know, with it, in America, we've seen a lot of very vocal people on this. You, it, it parades in Miami and things. Did you find anything similar to that well, in Cuba? We were, we were in Havana four days, and then we went inland, including the Bay of Pigs. And we were there one hour, and I remember hearing this funny type of siren. 
and you know we're in the Hotel Libre, big hotel in downtown Havana. And I look outside, and there's just a flood of people coming through the streets, and it was a protest. And they had given uh, all the school children of Cuba these free alien T-shirts. And most, you know, most young people were wearing the alien T-shirts. You've seen them in, in all the uh, protest photos. Um, most, if not all, the school children in Cuba wear uniforms. And it's not like they're regimented. They're just nice, clean uniforms. Mm -hmm. They don't have party badges on them. Uh, there are some people who think that it's good to wear uniforms to school. Um, you know, you're not playing the label game with each other. So you see these people, the young people come in, but then people of all ages. And granted, you know, the government did announce there will be a protest at this time. Um, and the last day we were there, there was also a protest because that was the 14th of um, January, and Elian was to have been returned to his hometown of Cardenas. And no, he didn't come mm -hmm. home. So they had a second probe, 100,000 people. And people were bussed in from, you know, the hinterlands for that. Um, and, you know, the people of the city turned out. Well, American sentiment has, is what a lot I've heard is that this is the Cuban government uh, using, using Alien as a, as a puppet, maybe, to try to win it back. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't see how they could see it that way. Well, people see what they want to see. Right. We have been, you know, it was, for 40 years we vilified Castro. In fact, you will note that just about every time there's a reference made to Fidel Castro, it's the dictator Castro. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, as if that was his first name. <laughs> I mean, we, we extend a certain amount of politeness to other leaders around the world. But, uh, you know, it's always been the dictator Castro and communism, even though they practice the state socialism. And, um, you know, th these roots run very deep, and they affect, you know, the way people are responding to these situations. Well, so the grandmothers come over and uh, think that there's going to be a resolution with this. Uh, that seemed to, to be kind of a blow-up because there, was, they had, there were so many restrictions put by both sides for the meeting and then a neutral site, and, and now what's happened? Well, they've been held hostage, you know, as well as alien. Mm -hmm. um, one of the questions most frequently asked is, why doesn't the father come? And one of the answers that we got, and, and our, one of our, our delegation, it was a Cuba study mission, and Alan Bierman, president of Nebraska Press Association, was you know, the, the delegation leader. But Chip Beck was really our day-to-day, -day, um, not tour guide, but you know, leader, benefactor, et cetera. Chip had, uh, was a former CIA operative who had actually served against the Cubans in Angola. And, uh, and he speaks Spanish. And um, he is um, a journalist out of Washington, D.C. at the present time. Anyway, Chip, he went off on his own to Gardenas. He, went, he talked to the people who Elian's father worked with. He went to the park where Elian used to play and where the father worked. Uh, he, he really you know, got a good deal of the story. Here's the point. Elian's father doesn't want to come because he knows he, once he's in Miami, he'll be a pawn. And there's a fear. There's a great fear. You think, you know, Americans are afraid of going to Cuba because hostility. Cubans are afraid of going to that uh, Miami area. So he's fearful. He's not a rich man. Someone's going to have to pay mm -hmm. to get him there. How long is he going to stay? And here's the bottom line. People are beginning to say that grandmother's trip was futile. There was no expectation that those grandmothers were coming here to get alien and take them home. Now it's in the federal courts. I think it's 22 February before it'll be heard. They came to see their grandson. Right. And, of course, now every little, you know, bit of play that can be gotten out of the story is being milked. And what we were told about Elian's father's reluctance to go because he didn't want to be a pawn, didn't want to be held hostage in Miami, you know, and did not want to fuel the fire anymore. That's exactly what's been happening with the grandmothers. So they came to meet at this neutral site uh, at Barry University it was, and, and the president was uh, originally, um, was she neutral or did she? Well, yeah, neutral? she was supposed she, to be neutral. Well, now she, she comes out saying, saying, keep him in the country. Right, because he's bonding with his cousin or... Well, um, I, you know... If, if, if you provide, uh, as an agent of negotiation, if you provide a safe and neutral zone, um, it certainly seems odd that you would violate that neutrality. Right. So we'll find out, I suppose, later.
Well, you know, and I, I worry, I, I think about uh, Alien, and I think, well, gee, look at what, what, what's been done to him. I mean, he's on television all the time, and obviously that means there's cameras following him, there's photographers following him, there's reporters following him. And I just wonder, you know, how can, how can he be happy with that? I mean, that may be, that may be a novelty for a while. Oh, that's for a Mickey little Mouse to keep my That's <laughs> right. And, yeah. that, and how did you, I, I don't know if it's that, I mean, that's, that's, part of, that's part of our mystique. Well, that, right. That, that will save all wounds. The fact that, that he must have faced death. I mean, 10 people around him died of drowning. Mm -hmm. uh, he's floating alone. His mother has died, and he's deprived right. for some reason of seeing his father. So it's going to take quite a bit of salve to heal those psychic wounds. Uh, last 30 seconds, parting thoughts on the trip. Well, it was a powerful experience. Um, and it, you know, I mean, I've traveled. I was in Russia. No, I was not in Russia. I was in the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics in 1991. We were in Belarus and, and uh, the Ukraine and, uh, you know, the Russian Republic. And uh, a long, long time ago, I was in East Germany and Czechoslovakia when it was, you know, behind the Iron Curtain, if you will. So, you know, I've had some experience here, but this was uplifting. This wasn't just going in there kind of feeling the ambiance of fear or repression. Uh, these are people that want their identity, and maybe something can be done about helping them get it. Well, certainly a, a hot topic of debate, I, unfortunately, is going to continue because he's still in the country. Dr. Barlow, thank you for joining us. We'll be back after this. stations are showing you their boring programming. Only one station is bringing news coverage closer to home. Now a story you'll hear first on 5. Every Tuesday and Wednesday night at 8 p.m., join the area's news leader, TV5 News. Tune in for the latest in local, regional, state, and national news. Plus, with our newspaper exchange partner, the Clarion News, teaming up to bring news coverage closer to home every Tuesday and Wednesday night at 8 p.m. You left the TV on. Shame. Wasting energy big time. I was watching a tape of my favorite movie, but then I had to go upstairs to iron your pants. You left the TV and the VCR on. Double shame. Please don't waste energy. It's a positive solution that will reduce air pollution. <laughs> Thank you. This is the story about a group of kids who volunteer. Do something nice for someone. We fixed stuff. Did some art projects with the kids. We fixed up his house. We worked in the woods. Cleaned up the park. Did something for the planet. We just did it. No other reason. And you know what? It was great. At first, they didn't know each other. Well, that didn't last long. This guy is really funny. The Ace are my new friends. Are, are you into it? it? Call 4 H or check out our website at areyouintoit.com. All right, and once again, thank, thank you, Dr. Barlow, for joining us today. Join us tomorrow night. State Senator Mary Jo White will be here. And coming up next is TV5 News, the first one of the year. Uh, two females sitting at the, female, at, the anchor, at the anchor desk. That should be kind of interesting. And two females also tomorrow night sitting at the anchor desk. We'll see you tomorrow.